some some uh, artists come up in just a second we got some interviews coming it's gonna be good y'all ready y'all yeah. ready yeah. oh yeah I'm ready too so I'm gonna bring up my first guest I want y'all to help me with a 217 live welcome Mr. Drayden song that I'm gonna do is called Chasing the Dream and um, I've been doing music for a while and rapping and writing and doing poetry and basically it's a dream that I'm chasing and I mean y'all can connect to it too because everybody individually has a dream in here so I just want y'all to listen to the words and, and just flow with me and if you feel like getting up let the spirit move you. Let the spirit move you. Check me. My mind say life is full of choices and decisions. I just hope I never have to say my. I should have listened. My attentions are attended. University hope to graduate and be known as universally dope. Hey, this hurting me. Nope. I just get them off of me. See, I'm destined for greatness. A true spoken prophecy. I won't sell out no matter what they offer me. Not on board with the games. Not into monopoly. I spit what's real. So rap is my therapy. Hoping that doing that when they will better me. Man, what's the recipe? I wish I had it next. If I did, I cook a fame and then have my success. But I don't, so I trust in the one that made me from his own. Cause I know what's out with him is where I belong. And that is just my heart. It really ain't a song. A demonstration to show. I'm just a fucking crow. You know you a king. You know you a queen. You chasing your dream. You never know what tomorrow brings. I try to fly high, to fulfill a hollow dream. Wish I knew I need you, I will go to them and I will leave. Every night I'm in this show until I'm knocked out. Got the keys to success while I'm feeling knocked out. I just hope I don't miss my only shot coming out the block. Wretched as he and be boxed out. But until then, I'm going to keep doing me and stay fresh to death. No eulogy.
to obtain success, they come back around. That's why I only trust God, the man with the crown. I hear it's only human, regardless of how they sound. I ain't the really brother, don't get it mistaken. We used to be tight, now we just associated. They already judging me and this, this my arrangement. Got me mixed up like a bad arrangement. I keep my friends in, gotta keep my vision good. I'm there without vision, has depth coming in. And I dream when I'm awake so I can still manage to steal. To make it come true and I have to feel it. Come on, if you know you're a king, you know you're a queen. You're chasing your dream, hands up and knees. Hey, hey, hands up and knees. Hey, 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 hands up and knees. Hey, hey, you know you're a king, you know you're a queen. You're chasing the king. Let me see your life, you see your hands and knees. Hey, nothing wrong with with denominations at all. I, I'm not bashing anything. But everything was so twenty-four <laughs> seven. And so I, I growing up I really didn't have balance. I didn't have balance because I was always, you know, Jesus, 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 Jesus. And I never really had any aspirations or 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 desires or dreams for anything outside of church. So um, when I think about Drayden, I think balance because Drayden, I happen to know that he he really, 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 really loves God. He really loves God and, and he's he's really driven to you know serving God and, and fulfilling the purpose that God has for him. But at the same time, he's really, really purpose driven. He's really goal driven and goal oriented. And he has a lot of things that um, that he desires to do outside of church and outside of, you know, the, the four walls that we see every week. He has a lot that he's desiring to do. And that inspires me. Um, I mean, it should inspire other people, too. And young people, you know, it should inspire you um, because you got to want something. You got to want something. I, I, there's absolutely nothing wrong with being in church and serving God. I love serving God. I love coming to church week after week. That's where I find my strength. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But what I'm saying is have something that you aspire for as well. Have something that you're reaching for when you leave the church. When people are looking at you on your secular job, they know that you're reaching for something. They know that you're aspiring for something other than speaking in tongues, other than binding demons. You know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, binding demons and speaking in tongues ain't gonna pay the bills. I think I'm preaching right there. <laughs> 
No, but really, I just have balance. You know, have balance. It's, 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 there's nothing wrong with, you know, being in love with God and serving Him to the best of your ability. But at the same time, have something that you aspire for. I've never been so driven now to be successful in other areas of my life outside of just church that, that I, I've never been this driven. I'm so driven now that I, I don't know what to do. I just, I mean, for those of you who don't, don't know, I just got a promotion on my job. So, you know, I, I, I'm 26 years old. I have a salary job. You know what I'm saying? So aspire for something different. Aspire to do something better. Now, I'm, I'm going to ask you a few questions. What, what, what is it that inspires your music? What is it that drives you whenever you're writing, whenever you're sitting down and you're getting your lyrics together? What is it that, that, that inspires you? Well, I like to call my music to life music. I don't know. Usually I like put titles on things because sometimes you get caught up in titles. And I, but if I had to put a title, it would be life. Because that's that's my per I mean that's that that is what I rap about, that's what I write about. Uh, whether it's about how God's using me, or rather how about my struggles, whether it's about finding my purpose, whether it's about love. You know, it's it's so many different things and, and I hate to just say I'm just gonna limit myself to one thing. And that's what my pastor taught me. Don't limit yourself to one thing. You limit yourself to one thing, it's going to go over people's heads and they're going to look at it and say, well, he's not relating to me. You know, um, he's talking about that one thing, you know, even if you're talking about scriptures all the time. Because I used to do hardcore script Christian rap. And I mean, I just be Thessalonians, you know, but I mean, we wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't reach it to anybody. Um, people weren't feeling it. They weren't feeling it because they couldn't relate to it, so it's life music. Just want to know. That's it. That's it. I'm... So what, at what point did you know that, that music was it for you? That, that was the thing for you? Nothing else would do? Well, um, I, I started writing poetry back when I was six years old. I had something published nationally at age seven, a, a poem. But, you know, as I got older, people weren't feeling the poetry. <laughs> I mean, some people do, but not everybody, you know? Especially the people that we're trying to reach. Because we can talk about the unreachable people that are not being reached. They're not finna listen to poetry coming out of jail. You know what I'm saying? They don't want to be like, you know, I want to see what this guy's talking about. What stanza? Tell me about that first stanza. Let's break down that first stanza. So I, I transitioned from poetry to music with my cousin. He was able to produce and everything, and he'll send me the beats, and I was so self-conscious about it. I never let anybody listen to it, really, at first. Um, I just wrote it, and I rapped it on my laptop, spitting in the screen, because, you know, the, 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 the mic was above it, so I had him. And um, it was like, but it was crazy, so I made that transition around the age of 12, and I started uh, rapping in churches. I rapped um, a couple churches locally, and that's how I started it, and um, I actually, once I got a taste of the music, a feeling of a concert, feeling of the electrifying, it's just more electrifying. The live band behind you, tracks, being in the studio, I mean, it's a different lifestyle that a lot of people are not able to live, and a lot of people are not privy to, so um, that's when I fell in love with it, so, yeah. All right, all right. So, when, when did you realize when did you realize that God would be the source of your success, of everything that you did? Because um, once I started doing it, this is real simple. It's crazy because even when I make um, my Christian songs or my secular songs or my crossover songs, I always put God in it, rather subliminally or rather straight. And I just be like, dang, God, you're finding your way back in everything I do. I mean, regardless of what kind of tragedy it is. So, um, I just knew that, it, and coming from my family, um, like my brother, he's a minister, he really put me on a lot of different music. A lot of gospel, a lot of Christian, a lot of old school. My parents love music, but um, like I said, once once my brother David showed me a couple things, like he will show me some new type of Christian music. I just call it new type. People like Kenny Jones. <laughs> You know, I remember us, we opened, we was coming down, we was on the interstate ride together, he got a Cannon Jones CD, and we popped it in together, and we were just looking at each other like this the whole time, like, did you hear this? <laughs> this is different, you know, 
what I'm saying? So it kind of made me feel more comfortable about stepping outside of the box. You know, so it's big. Mr. Drayton Dunn, everybody. Woo! Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so I just wanted to take an opportunity to thank the, the lady, the woman of God who have made this night possible. Um, because I, I, I just want the people to know what your heart was behind this concept. Um, can you just take a few seconds just to explain what, what your heart was behind this? Wow. My heart behind Thai TV was, I always feel like we need to be able to turn on the TV at any hour of the day and be able to get a word. You know, and I wanted something that a hurt person can go to at three o'clock in the morning and get delivered, one o'clock in the afternoon and be encouraged. So I wanted to do Thai TV because I believe the gospel has got to go all around the world. And I believe this is a great form. Television is the biggest evangelism tool that it would, there will ever be. In 28.30 seconds, 30 minutes, we reach over a million people, just 30 minutes. We reach a million people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. So I'm excited about Thai TV. I want you to tune in every day. It's 24 hours a day. Amen. And we are actually a network that have 5 a.m. prayer on the network. So you can turn in and pray with us at 5 a.m. So tune in to Thai TV. That's www.thaitvonline.org. www.thaitvonline.org. And be blessed in Jesus' name. If you're being blessed by 2175, we want you to click on that done day button right now. Right now. Jesus is alive. Come on, how many of you know that he is alive? Come on, you want to show me his glory all over the world. Come on.
have been with these, all of these people every week, week after week after week. And it is so amazing just to be able to worship with people that uh, have, have such a heart for God. I want to ask you real quickly, First Lady, what would you say, what can you tell the people, what's the difference from just being a singer, getting up, grabbing the mic, versus actually leading the people in worship, actually ministering to God before the people? Well, first of all, I think that what most entertainers or people that just sing, they're worried about uh, captivating the audience or getting a response from the audience. But when you're worshiping and you're leading people into worship, you're worried about captivating him. Yeah. You're worried about get, getting his presence and, and worshiping him and setting the atmosphere for his presence to be made manifest in the place or in or wherever the setting is. All right. Really quickly, what is it like for you, for you to be able to be up on stage every week and see the response of the people, to see the response that the people are giving to God. Well, how, how, does that, how does that impact your life? Um, I think it's a good thing to see because, um, one, it, it, it shows you um, the people's relationship with Christ that they have. When we come here and meet and, you know, we're sitting in our praises, we're worshiping, it just shows um, how the relationship is when, they're, when we're not at church, you know. Um, for me, I think um, it helps me to see their expectation level. You know, when we come in here and we worship and, and praising God and before the word comes, it just lets me know that people are really here to hear what God has to say. People are not just here to see what so-and-so has on or see what's going on. They're really here with a hunger and a thirst for God, and that really blesses me that people come in here to give praises to the Almighty God. That's what blesses me. I have one more question, but before I ask Last question. Can you state your name for everybody, please? <laughs> My name is Monisha. Sheree. And Alicia. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, but this my last question. What can you explain what I don't even know how to ask this question because I get so excited when I think about it. What is it? Can you explain the feeling that you have when you see people come in? And they are, they are so excited, just so excited about the presence of God. It pulls, it pulls on something in you, and it makes you give like 125%. Can you, I mean, just, it, it just, how does it make you feel? I don't, I don't know how to ask that question. But. Well, I don't know about for them, but for me, it makes me uh, feel like, hey, there's somebody else that's out there that's in agreement with worshiping God. There's somebody out there that's, that's looking for his presence to be made manifest in a greater dimension. There's somebody out there that's pulling on God. There's somebody that's coming with an expectation. So it, 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 in turn, it ignites a greater passion. It ignites a greater fire because there's two or three of us here in agreement for that purpose, for God to be in the midst. So it really excites me. Really excites me. Well, all right. <laughs> um, I, I, we're getting ready to move on. Um, I do want to introduce y'all to the Band of Prophets. We have the Band of Prophets. <laughs> Samuel Sims, Samuel Sims Jr., Travis Mack, and Jameis Williams. These guys, oh my God. These, yeah. When I tell you they labor, they labor, and it makes all the difference in the world. I'm so grateful to, for the team that we have. But really quickly, we're getting ready to move on. I want you to take about 10, maybe 10 seconds, and just tell me what the difference is from uh, being just a musician uh, versus being a minstrel and actually ministering before the people of God. Okay, 10 seconds. A, a, a musician, well, I can tell you about a minstrel. A minstrel, if you look in the Bible, a minstrel was called for. The Bible says that Elisha called for a minstrel. The Bible says that Saul called for David. And the minstrel, they set the atmosphere. The, the preacher needed the minstrel to set the atmosphere because of what the preacher was going through. Saul needed the minstrel to come set the atmosphere because of what Saul was going through. Whenever somebody died, Jesus had to put the minstrels out of the, 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 the funeral because the, the minstrels were setting a, a, a theme or they were setting an atmosphere of grief. So the minstrel set the atmosphere and in most cases they are called for and they're sent to a place so that the atmosphere can be set. Thank you so much. Everybody, Genesis, Band of Prophets, give them a hand.
just want to take this time once again to thank y'all for tuning in to 217. This has been an awesome, amazing experience. Listen, if you don't know the Lord as your Savior, I invite you personally to invite him into your heart. Let him be your Lord. Let him make some changes in your life, and, and, and it'll be all good. Thank you so much for tuning in to 217.